Welcome to another episode of To The Moon. And this week I have a very, very special friend, student, guest, Mahmoud, uh, amazing, amazing guy. He's been in the Astro Flipping program for a little bit of, a little bit of time now, and uh, your strides have been incredible, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So uh, you've seen a couple episodes of To The Moon before, and so you know this is a show all about you. Not about me. This is all about you. What brought you to wholesale real estate? Um, but you know, beyond just your time in wholesale, we want to know a little bit about you personally. So let's start with Mahmoud the Man. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and my my story is basically I've, you know, ever since you know I could remember, I've always been a student. So. I finished high school in 2013, and then ever since then, I uh, I went to UC San Diego for my bachelor's in chemical engineering, um, and then after that, I moved from San Diego to uh, San Jose, where I did uh, my master's in chemical engineering um, at San Jose State University, um, and I finished up around the time that the pandemic started, and. Um, I thought it would be a really great opportunity to explore some form of entrepreneurship. And I had not, I wasn't really, you know, um, into the entrepreneurship world. Um, I mean, I did my minor in entrepreneurship and innovation at UCSD, but other than that, I hadn't really been accustomed to, um, I didn't really, I've always wanted to start a business, but I hadn't actually found an opportunity to do it. So the COVID pandemic was a perfect time for me because I had all the time in the world. I just graduated and I was just ready to to go. And uh, it was really a silver lining of an unfortunate situation because I, uh, that was at a time where I was really deciding between um, continuing to do my PhD in material science um, got offers from uh, Cornell University and UCSD to do their um, to do their transition from uh, the master's to the PhD program and kind of continue with that curriculum. And I always known I wanted to be an entrepreneur, whether that be in the field of nanotechnology, which is my absolute you know passion, you know something that I would have started after doing a PhD program, um, but or in terms of like other business ventures. And so what I decided to do was you know, really go into real estate and start raising capital, start thinking more about the future. And so I spent around three or four months, um, I think I started in March 2020, uh, researching um, uh, on YouTube and just watching a ton of videos from a lot of different uh, real estate professionals, gurus, influencers, and trying to learn, you know, how can someone start with no money down, not a lot of experience and enter the real estate game and then work their way up to owning rentals, creating passive income, that sort of thing. And um, in this process of learning it, I, you know, just dove right in. I learned how assignments worked. I started uh, um, in, uh, you know, I started finding off market properties online, going and seeing them, um, finding buyers for them. And through this journey of building up my network, I met a a uh, fellow investor by the name of Jonah Korchin, which you oh, wow. um, know. He's uh, he's out here in the Bay Area. He's also an Astro student, really hard worker, excellent guy. Um, and he um, basically he didn't recommend the program. He actually um, he went ahead and uh, sent me a comping video. It was your comping video. And I learned a lot from it. And then um, it helped me kind of improve the way I, I comp properties and it, I saw massive success with it. And then, you know, as the YouTube algorithm does, I got one of your videos two days later, clicked the link and uh, talked to one of your associates. And then I just loved his pitch. And I was like, this is what I need. I need some sort of a medium where I am in the space of being my own entrepreneur and business owner, but at the same time, I have the community around me that's also going through the same thing, and I have a mentor to teach me. So it, it provided me with what I was already accustomed to, which is a professor in a classroom setting, essentially, and a lot of people to kind of collaborate and you know pool resources and work together to achieve a common goal. So that's kind of really the, uh, the trajectory that led me into uh, up until uh, the Astro Flipping program. 
crazy. So masters in engineering. I mean, like you're my mom and dad's dream come true, like, <laughs> right? For real. Like they, if, if, if they could have um, had an engineer, I'm sure, you know, they, they would have been super happy. Um, so that's a big pivot, right? From going from engineering to real estate. What was your thought process? I mean, you know, the pandemic happened. You obviously were you had just come out of school. So I can't imagine you were really earning anything at that point. Uh, did you have a, a career or a job then? Or were you just kind of in transition? I was really in transition. I mean, I had a couple, I had already worked um, engineering jobs while I was doing my master's and and I liked them and and they were they were cool. But I think really the transition happened when I when I decided that I didn't really want to um, pursue the nine to five engineering kind of lifestyle. I, I, I engineering for me is a passion. I love <laughs> it. I enjoy doing it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be where I make my income and how I make a living. And so it was really the the point where it clicked for me is when I disassociated the concept of going to school to get a job to make money. I went to school because I wanted to learn. I wanted to obtain knowledge and I wanted to be um, to to be able to have knowledge that allows me to interact with my environment, know what's going on. And it led me to a passion in, in engineering. And I decided that that's a passion. That's something I enjoy that I can do other things too. You know, I, it, I'm not defined by that. And so the one thing that UCSD, my alma mater, really kind of instilled in me was the well-roundedness of obtaining knowledge. You know, I, I developed a passion for, for fields such as philosophy, psychology, the arts, sciences, the humanities. And it really made me feel that I am alive to absorb as much information as possible and contribute to my society and my environment and help others as much as I can. And so it just clicked for me that, you know, I want to learn how to essentially the art of making money. And so when I started wholesaling and I got into real estate, I realized that I'm fit for this because I'm an engineer and engineering is not is not based on the science it's the problem solving um you know acumen and the skill set that you obtain from for from following the scientific method from forming a hypothesis having an objective you know doing your some background research um you know doing an experiment analyzing the data and then making a decision and then going back and repeating the cycle and, and learning more and i found that i could largely apply that to real estate and so if anyone's watching who is, has a stem background um science technology engineering mathematics and you you've been thinking about joint being a part of the real estate community and becoming a real estate investor i guarantee there is a place for all of you because this will challenge you and it will provide a space for you to hone and, and satiate your creative, um, your creative desires. And it'll, it'll definitely uh, provide that satisfaction. That's very much parallel to your, to your existing fields. It's funny you say that because y you know, I, I actually have a science background as well. I, I did a degree in physiology. I didn't go as far as you, I don't have a master's degree, uh, but definitely, you know, sciences was, where I spent my time when I was in, in post-secondary education. And organic chemistry, uh, oddly enough, was one of my favorite courses, right? Oh, and it's great. Those, yeah, it's one of those courses that gives people anxiety. It, it makes people, you know, uh, not sleep at night. It's <clears throat> probably one of the most difficult courses in undergraduate uh, studies in science, right? Uh, OCHEM 1, OCHEM 2. And so... I loved it. I loved synthesis. I loved the the process of it. I, I enjoyed, you know, having raw materials and then seeing, you know, what kind of what what chemical reactions can what if I have these two product these two elements and I have this chemical reaction, I add this catalyst, what do I get? And you know, um, that's amazing because it's the same thing for real estate, right? You yeah. have a problem property, you have a problem situation, you have people who require uh, inventory so that they can fuel their fix and flip businesses, or you have buy and hold investors, or you have, you know, people looking for capital protection, whatever their, their real estate investment need is. Um, and your goal is to be the catalyst for the reaction, right? You want to, you want to make the deal and the end byproduct is a check and the problem solved and, 
and a beautiful home and, 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 and solutions. And that's why it's so scientific what we do, yet it's so humanities based as well, because you really have to understand people. You have to know how to connect with people, build rapport with people. And you've done an amazing job of it. And I can say, Mahmoud, um, something that I've, I truly admire of you, watching how you came into the program and interacted with everybody was, you know, I remember in the early days when you were first trying to wrap your head around things and, and you were hitting the first walls, right? The first walls, that, that's a, that is a, it, bro, if you, don't, if you don't hit that wall, you don't deserve the passage through it, right? You don't deserve that, that next, that, that first, that goal. And you were hitting that wall. I remember, you know, you showing up to the coaching calls and, and you weren't ever negative. You were always like, I know this is a problem. And I know this is, a, this is, this is uh, really something that people go through all the time. I need to figure out how to get to the other side of the problem. I'm, your, your ability to know that there was a, re that there was a result, that the, that the result would, would happen for you uh, if you just did the scientific things, like, you know, if you, if, if I control this variable and I manipulate this variable, I'm going to get this result. And, and knowing those things, the way that you would bring that to the calls and you would bring that to the other students in the community was inspiring because it allowed people to really deconstruct this process and demystify the process from being this ethereal, like, you know, magical thing of like, you, you're good at real estate or you're not good at real estate. That's BS. You're not good at real estate or not good at real estate. You are either able to solve problems or you haven't really figured out how, how you want to solve problems yet. And, and it, there's, that really is all it takes. And I've watched you come in, assist other people while you were learning yourself. Tell me a little bit about that because I know in, in especially when you're in university and you're in a, like a lab environment, especially in the sciences, there's that collaborative approach to being able to get through uh, processes and, and find a result and, and, and get the thing that you're looking for. Tell me about that in your journey, because I've seen you hold people's hands while you were still working it through yourself. And, and I find that to be heroic. I find that to be a, a, an amazing personality trait. Where did it come from? First off, what, what makes you such a giving person that you're willing to, to extend help and offer other people assistance, even when you're, you're needing assistance yourself? Um, and then talk about the result of that. What did you see was ended up being the result of, of you, that effort and, and how that is your um, methodology of, of doing this business? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so basically, I think what that stems from is, you know, I spent... I think around three, probably four years now doing scientific academic research. And in these research labs, everyone's constantly, you know, trying to figure out, you know, new things and what's, there's always issues that are coming, going on with people's projects. And we, we in that lab, like in the research environment, there's, you know, other students Whoa. who are all trying to assist each other with certain things that we know that the other person might need assistance on. So if I was, you know, someone who um, understood a specific, you know, chemical reaction or a specific material system, um, and there was somebody else who was more of a mechanically inclined person and less chemical knowledge, I would then go and assist them with that. I'd pull up a research paper and hand it to them, explain it to them and help them with that uh, if they need any citations and vice versa, if I needed help building a new fixture or a characterization equipment, I would get assistance from those peers who are excellent at that and then they would help me. Um, and it's really just coming from that environment of, of working together in a collaborative environment and utilizing each other's skill sets to provide value and help wherever you can. And I really saw massive parallels um, in this environment because you have a bunch of students who are all are all coming are first of all different points in their life you know career wise age wise and they all have different levels of knowledge and um you know things to offer and things to provide and i thought you know the least that i could do you know by entering this very immersive environment is is do what i can contribute which is i'm i i've been told i'm pretty good at teaching explaining things breaking things down and I'm very analytical in terms of 
understanding how to take a process, break it down into very simple fundamentals, and then reassemble it and teach it. And so, um, and that 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 that's in terms of like troubleshooting, problem solving, and being able to kind of, you know, if identify parts in a process that need changing and helping people assist them with that. So I thought that if I were to do that, so I, I went ahead and created, you remember I did like a five week uh, podcast series called uh, Talking to Wholesalers. Um, the name was slightly inspired by Brent's TTP. I was like, that would be a cool play on the name. But um, it's basically, I just thought that one, that people were being super by the book, who people who I was talking to, because um, people, I would have get like five or 10, you know, Astro students calling me every week, asking my take on things, asking for help. And then I decided, let me just do some, so have some sort of a, a medium where I can kind of break things down for people. And, you know, people just needed to, to learn about the concept of this business is about collaboration. And so it's about talking to other wholesalers, talking to other investors and, you know, while we do want to take care of our cash buyers, make sure that they're happy and our, you know, sellers make sure they're happy. There's certain ways to offer value directly to other wholesalers and in terms of connecting with them. And so I always say the, the, the phrase, you know, um, I don't care about the deal. I care about the relationship. And, you know, it was just a very fun environment for me to be able to assess people and perpetuate that notion that the industry much needs that that essentially facilitates this collaborative <laughs> environment. Um, and then we started removing words like daisy chaining and things that 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 provide such a stigma in this industry. And we started teaching people how to do correct business very much. In, I, I'd say it was essentially like utilizing everything I learned in the Astro program and just packaging it in a way such that people can really understand that they can embrace that they're wholesalers. They can understand that, you know, we're all in this together and we can help each other out. And one person can, can provide, you know, assistance in an area where another person can offer in another area. And I really was just all about this community building because I, I think the number one thing that I've gained from the Astro program is the community and it's all the other people who are out there providing so much knowledge, so much assistance, and just this this collective will to, to grow and succeed. I love that, man. And it's and it's really true, right? It's this community that we have in the Astro program that's just beyond the training. The the community is fantastic and and so many deals happen from connecting with other community members and 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 being a part of that collaborative process. Let's talk about that a little bit because you've had some tremendous success in the program and you've had tremendous success working with other Astro students. How's how has the ROI been? What's your <clears throat> what's the what, what does it look like for you? Well, I think since since I started, I've done about about sixty five thousand dollars in assignment fees um, since I started yeah and uh, right. that's that's around huh I, I mean look bro I, I that that is that's fantastic because I don't I, you know I I know people that that you know do a four year or you know four year college degree and then they go out and do a master's and the ROI on a 10 year education, uh, isn't going to be $65,000 in, in assignment fees. It, that just doesn't happen, right? And so uh, first off, congratulations on that success. That's really, you know, it's really great. That's that's fantastic. Um, and you're just getting started, right? Like you just can started connecting the dots. You just started earning. And you spent a lot of time analyzing and 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 figuring the stuff out before you started, you know, making making money. And so What's next? Like, what are you what are you trying to build at this point? What's next for Mahmood in terms of the business and where you plan to go with it? Yeah. So basically, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to see success with, you know, a very specific kind of, you know, like a process map and workflow that I'm working with. And so my my next move is to scale it up and try to go into another market because so far all of the. Uh, my deals have been in the Atlanta market, which I've leveraged 
you know, um, you know, the, the Atlanta real estate investor community. And uh, I think I'm, I'm at a point where that's kind of starting to become on autopilot, like the same connections are bringing me the same deals and it's the same buyers. And I think I'm going to try and venture into another market or two um, later this upcoming year. Um, but I, uh, in, in terms I of the actual volume, I think I can possibly sustain around 20 to 30 deals without hiring a VA, just the way that I have my system. So it kind of saves on HR resources and hiring people. Mahmoud, you live in you live in the Bay Area. Yeah, San Jose. Have you ever been to Atlanta? <clears throat> no, I don't. I've never been to Atlanta. I know all the zip codes in the streets, but I've never been. I mean, I, I just need to highlight that because I don't think that that you you pass by that so so uh, rapidly, and I don't think that people caught that. Mahmoud is doing all of his deals in a city he's never been to from a city across the country, leveraging the community, leveraging the things that he's learned in the program. And he now has it on autopilot to the point where he's now adding another vertical or another market onto his business so that he can scale. He's got it to a point now where things are sort of going on autopilot. He's gotten $65,000 in assignments. He can add on another market just like that and turn this into a multi-million dollar business with the right systems and the right amount of time and the right nurturing. Um, it's incredible. That is an incredible amount of success. What's your, what's your average deal volume right now on a month to month basis? Uh, right that? now it's, it's around like uh, five to, to six a month. And uh, mind you, I've only been, you know, seeing this, uh, you know, volume since for only a, a couple of months. You know, I joined the Astro program in July and it took me around five months to close my first deal. And it's because I was just plotting, developing a system, doing my research, understanding, growing it and developing the connections. But once once that that got set in stone and I've adapted it to a certain point, things could have sort of launched. And yeah. I'm just trying to carry that momentum on. And I'm super excited to see it grow. I love it. So you're doing five to six deals a month. What's your monthly? What's your monthly marketing spend, Mahmoud? Zero dollars. Hey, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. You see, I uh, I do these these commercials every once in a while, and I say that to people, and I get beat up. I get beat up sometimes in those comments from people because they're like, "This is absolute trash. There's no chance that this guy's telling the truth." And you know, we we do sixty to eighty transactions in my corporate store at Keegley in Phoenix, one of the most competitive real estate markets in the United States. And my marketing spend still is $0. And uh, people don't believe it. But here you are proof in the pudding. You're, you know, you learn the process, you learn the systems, you got it, put it, put it to practice. And you launched, as you put it, um, to the moon, and you're, 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 you're he headed there. And I, and I, I can't wait for you to set up shop uh, with you know wholesaling deals, wholesaling deals on the moon is is going to be uh, all it, a very cool thing for you. You'll probably be the the number one wholesaler on the moon at that time. Um, <laughs> Mahmoud, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm super proud Thank of everything you. you've accomplished. Uh, this is a tremendous feat. Do you have any any practices that you do daily that allow you to stay as positive as you are? Because I see you, and you you definitely have a really great disposition to you. What's your secret? I think really what I do to kind of stay grounded is I just try to, um, well, first of all, I, I work out every morning, like even if it's just a 30 minute run or, you know, just anything to kind of get my body moving, get my, my body like machine functioning correctly, um, get the blood flowing. I meditate for even as, as small as five minutes, um, up to 15 minutes, just kind of grounding my mind, gaining some presence, being mindful and just kind of decelerating my thoughts. Um, I, I try to eat, um, super healthy and just, uh, have my energy levels at a, at a peak performance peak state throughout the day. Um, but also I, I try and just stay in the moment and just enjoy what I have and, become and just appreciate everything and just gratitude is super important to me and i try to really make it 
a point to be happy right now and not to say I'll be happy after I achieve a certain goal because that's something that's going to be super recursive and it's I'll just be chasing my tail. I'm just, you know, trying to live in the moment and and take it one day at a time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's important for us to put our mental health first above everything and feel like I'm at a state where, you know, I'm just enjoying it every day, day by day, you know, taking it slow. <laughs> Beautiful, man. How do people find you? How do people get a hold of you? Because there's guys in Atlanta who are going to watch this. They're going to want to do deals with Mahmood. Uh, where's the next market that you're heading to? Have you, have you figured that out? Yeah. So, um, right now I'm in, in the Atlanta market and I will be, um, hopefully transitioning, um, checking out the Florida markets right now. So I will hopefully be transitioning to, um, Orlando and then, uh, maybe moving on to, uh, to Tampa and Jacksonville, um, you know, as after kind of testing those markets, but you can reach me on Instagram, um, at my handle is the REI real estate investing, the REI engineer. Um, and my, uh, um, I, I linked my, um, give Emily my phone number to link the description. It's 858-952-9091. Um, you know, if anyone's in Atlanta and they want to talk about doing business, just shoot me a text, um, or give me a ring. Um, and my email is mahmood at eruditeconnections.com. So, you know, um, don't be a stranger. If anyone wants to uh, to talk and set some goals, uh, I'm out here and I do this full time. Amazing. Any final bits of advice for those that are just deciding, waiting, struggling, or thinking about the next move for their their financial future or their lives before we we end today? Um, don't get in your own way. Like try and you know if if you've justified something as being logical, allow yourself to just lean into it and success will come. Um, and if you're already wholesaling, keep your pipeline moving. You know, if you if you just closed a $50,000 deal, don't get too excited. You know, still put in your time today, your time tomorrow, the time the next day. And, you know, just always keep the pipeline filling because it's about 30 days residence time for a deal to close from the point it hits your email box to the point you cash the check. So keep them moving every single day and you'll notice some massive, massive success and just stay up, be woke, be positive And yeah, just uh, let's get it. Let's get it going. My man, Mahmood, I, I absolutely adore you. I think you're a fantastic human being. You're an amazing wholesaler. You're a, a, a loving and most welcome addition to this community. You're going to stick around a long time. I, I'm happy to be doing business with you. I, ha I can't wait to do more business with you in the future. And congratulations. Congratulations on all your, sex, all your success. To the moon, baby. To the moon. To the moon. Thank you, Jamil.